one billion years in the future, Earth still exists, though maybe not as we imagine it. Eras upon bygone eras worth of technology have been left behind by eight previous and fallen civilizations. It is now up to the denizens of the Ninth World to piece together what was left behind. Perhaps they're looking to carve out their place in the world, or simply to survive a land riddled with weird and unearthly dangers. Or perhaps still, they just wish to learn and uncover the secrets of the Numenera. Whatever it is this new era of adventurers and heroes is looking to discover, they'll have to dig through the imprinted echoes of the past to find it. An amnesis. Noun. The recollection or remembrance of the past. Reminiscence. Hello, and welcome to Imprinted Echoes, a family-friendly Numenera actual play podcast. My name is Zan, and I'll be your GM. Thanks for joining us today, and as always, we hope you're staying safe and healthy. With Amiri dispatched, our adventurers do their best to deal with the rest of the group hired by Serratus. It's going to take every trick in the book to get out of this one. Just so long as nothing unexpected happens, that is. Allies are leveraged, intrusions are made, and things start to fall apart. Join us as Nehemiah, Smallren, and Jory fight for their lives. With their leader dead, the rest of your rival party has taken up very violent arms against you. Tana discards the metal shard that she has and for a little bit is like kind of like rummaging through her bag just to see if there's anything else useful for upcoming turns. Now it's Jory's turn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to thwack Zerk on the nose. <laughs> See if maybe it's not having bad Zerk. Bad. It's, Stop it. it's not having any effect the other way around. So maybe this will do the trick. Go ahead. It is a level four might. Peachy. Probably not gonna do much, but we'll see. Oh, success with a 13. So that's four damage. Your staff bounces off a little bit as part of those tendrils are still kind of wrapped around him. So you do two damage. Nehemiah, it is your turn. How is Zerk looking? Because we've been wailing on, on them for a minute. Pretty okay, honestly. <laughs> <sighs> you guys have been engaged with him for a while. You've only hit him twice. Fair. Well, let's see if we can make that three times. That's difficulty four to attack. That is correct. All right. We roll na <laughs> natural 20 <laughs> again. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> what? We're not going to comment I, on it. We're not going to comment on it. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. I assume you want the damage. I do, in fact, yeah. want the damage. Oof. I blocked that last attack, and then I go back in. I switch stances and just rush and try and plant this spear as deep into their chest as I can. The tendrils once again try to solidify to block the attack a little bit. The armor still does apply, but you get like in between mm -hmm. two of them and really jab far into Zerk's ribs. 10 damage total for you, right? Yes. Six plus the four mm -hmm. extra, minus two, so eight. That puts them in a rough spot. He is looking bad mm -hmm. at this point, like stumbles back a little bit, has to recollect himself, is a little bit shocked that such a powerful blow was able to land. Mm -hmm. Nice job. Anything else, Nehemiah? No, no. Cool. <laughs> We're good. Small run then. I have an idea. Raven is still standing pretty close to the control panel, correct? Yeah, she hasn't moved a whole lot. Like a handful of steps back and forth here and there, but not far away from it at all. Smallrin manages to duck out of the way of her pot shot, turns around, grabs something off of her belt and the spear that she carries off her back, breaks a little vial over the tip of the spear, and then starts running at Raven. I want to try and use my intense interaction and intimidate her into falling back against the control panel. Okay. Because she has that energy field around her still, correct? Mm-hmm. Sure does. I want to try and intimidate her back into the control panel to cause damage to it so Locker will attack her. Go ahead and roll intimidation. It'll be a level four and you can apply your intense interaction. Beautiful. Going to spend for a point of effort. Success with a 12. You break the vial 
with your spear. Also, the vial's empty. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed that it was like an inert component. Yeah, she hasn't taken the time to prepare a deadly poison. This is just like something right. she had on her. There's something in it, but like alone, it's the equivalent of like, cool, I'm going to put... Apple juice. Yeah. Uh, witch hazel. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> I was going to say rubbing alcohol. I'm glad we all went in completely different Listen, areas here. Apple juice is surprisingly one of the main components in Smallrin's favorite poison. She always has it on her. It's a cyanide in the sea. It's a little bit of <laughs> work. It's an inert, harmless component, but Raven doesn't know that. And yeah, you scare her into taking two steps back and running into that panel, and that halo around her flares, and the controls on that interface just start going berserk. Like, everything is flashing and flickering, and you can see a little bit of, like, a discoloration. Kind of when you press an LCD screen, those colors kind of flare out. It looks like that kind of emanating from around her on that panel. And Lakra is activated. Probably fine. It's probably fine. It's Raven's turn. Raven pulls herself away from the interface, not really realizing that anything is wrong with that. So doesn't react in any way other than you push me up against the wall and that's annoying. And once again, fires a shot off at you. Level four, you get two assets on your speed defense. Yay. Oh no, guys. <laughs> GM intrusion failure with a one. This is the price for all of those... Uh... <laughs> All those high rolls. So first things first, you take eight might damage. Ooh, okay. That's a problem because I only have six points in my might pool right now. Once it takes out of might, you then transfer it over to the next one that makes sense. So I would say speed. Youch. You are one tick down the damage track, aren't you? I am. So I'm impaired, correct? Correct. All right. When you apply effort, it costs you one extra point and you cannot get major or minor effects. Okay. And anything from 17 or higher that deals extra damage, regardless if you roll a 17, 18, 19, or 20, you only get one extra point okay. of damage. So that happens. Mm -hmm. And then GM intrusion. The energy hits you, but then not only does it damage you, but it like dissipates over the course of your body and kind of envelops you entirely for a moment. Please roll me a d20. Oh no. Straight up dice rolls are never a good thing. <laughs> Just make a Seven. dice. Seven. 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 Oh no. <laughs> okay. Um Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with this. Give it to me straight, doc. Will I be able to play the piano after this? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Smaller, and you feel the midnight stone in your pouch flare. And there's a strange sensation in your shoulders and your hips as your arms and legs bloodlessly drop off from your body. <laughs> and you as a torso kind of hit the ground. <laughs> Well, like a Barbie yeah. doll. I will let you as players know this. You as characters might have to figure this out. But if held in place to where they were once detached, they will reattach themselves as the user makes a recovery roll. Okay. So they can be reattached, but they have to be reattached by someone else. <laughs> that That's <makes> incredible. <laughs> so, Smallrin, your arms and legs fall off and the rest of your body hits the ground. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Do I fall on oh. my back or my face? I will let you choose because this is a pretty intense situation here. Would you like to fall on your back, I yes, assume? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You fall on your back. Oh and Nehemiah, Jory, I'll say you can see this. Like, Zerk is there, <laughs> but like, you can see around <laughs> him. <laughs> what? Okay, real, real quick, real quick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does it affect my clothes? Like, is it just I've just fallen in a pile and like my arms over here, my leg is over there? Or are they being held somewhat in place by like the pants and the shirt that I'm wearing? But mm. I've clearly like disarticulated and I'm in a pile. I think it's more disarticulated okay. in a pile. Yeah, you're right. Your pants would kind of keep them nearby. Your shirt and cloak would kind of keep your arms roughly in the same spot, but they are detached and unusable. Cool. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. She's been a mannequin this whole time. 
she got out of our line of sight and for just a second and then she went to pieces. <sighs> okay. Um, goodness gracious. Great pile of small <sighs> Someone ready. remind me what turn... <laughs> Can someone remind me whose turn we're on I'm, right I'm now? Try, because hold on, I I'm trying to think. That, that was, was Raven's Raven. turn, wasn't wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that okay. was Raven's turn. So we're on search. Okay. Also, just putting it out there, can we add to the list of T-shirt ideas? Goodness uh-huh. gracious, great piles of swore. <laughs> there are so many there T-shirt so ideas. Many. One of these days, I'm going to start actually working on a couple ideas for actual physical designs. Zerk once again tries to hit the three of you that are nearby. So Jory and Nehemiah, level four speed defense. Success with a nine. Failure with a six. Okay. So Nehemiah, you will take five might damage. And armor does apply. Excellent. And he does make an attack against Tana as well. Nehemiah, since you failed, um, can you please roll a might defense level four? Still have an asset. Natural one, GM intrusion. This is all over the place. <laughs> all right, so you fail that might defense roll, Nehemiah, and you are constrained mm-hmm. by them. And they start squeezing mm-hmm. and squeezing hard. You look at Zerk and he is really straining to try and keep you contained. You have done so much to him that he is just like red in the face trying to keep himself together to make this happen and squeezes and squeezes and squeezes and you take another five points of might damage. I am at zero. Okay, so you are now also impaired. Effort costs an additional point. You cannot get major or minor effects and anything over a roll of 17 only gives you plus one damage. Okay. Falco, seeing that Smolren has literally fallen to pieces... (laughs) Falco crawls over to near where the doorway is to kind of look down the hall and sees that Zerk has Nehemiah in almost a literal chokehold. Jory, I need you to roll me intellect defense level four. Okay, intellect defense. And again, you do have an absence. Yes, that's very good. Uh, success with a 17. Okay. What is a being or creature that Jory is scared of? Um, that's a very good question. I mean, because th- there's just lots of options. I love that Smolin had a hard time figuring out what she might be scared of, and Joy is like, I don't know, everything? <laughs> <laughs> Most things, at least a little bit. Dremlin? Yeah, that feels straightforward. Yes, yes, that's, let's do that. Right behind Zerk, you see Dremlin appear. In just a flash of momentary panic, you see his coy, deceptive smile. But you're able to, again, push past that and realize in a moment that this is an illusion. There's no way he would still be down here. There's no way that he could just appear. Oh, no, that's just, here. that's just mean. That's mean. Falco! And that is Falco's turn. Brex's turn. Would you like to keep Brex on defense or switch to an asset on attack? Probably stick with defense, considering okay. the current situation. Yeah. Considering where we're at. Tana is trying to see if she has something that could help Nehemiah's situation, but is not particularly finding anything immediately. Yep. Have we used both of her uh, foil dangers yet? We have yet? one more. We have Just one more. One. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. And Locker still has two heals. Jory, it's your turn, though. Uh-huh. Everything's gone uh, unwell. The biggest threat to me directly and to those around me seems to still be Zerk. So I'm going to go ahead and jab it at any weak spot I think there might be, regardless of whether or not it's true. Sure. Level four. Yep. Uh, Fail with an eight. So Zerk has very intense eye contact maintained with Nehemiah as he's trying to squeeze the life out of him. And you come up from the side trying to hit him with the staff and a tendril just like shoots out lightning fast and wraps around your staff and doesn't pull it from your hands, but like takes the ad inertia of it and throws it so that you miss. Raven and Smallrin have been showing down for a little while. Zerk has Nehemiah in a death grip of his metal tendrils. Falco has been slinging illusions left and right, and everyone, yourselves included, are looking a little bit worse for wear. Before any of you have a chance to do anything, Lakra pushes past into the room, pays no mind to the situation between Zerk and Nehemiah and Jory and Tana, but makes a beeline towards Raven. No, no, it's fine. I'm fine. 
<laughs> and those objects floating around Lakra's head. Once again, they pluck one of the sharp looking objects. Maybe it's a cipher. You still haven't quite determined what it is these things are, but holds it in their hand and just kind of pushes it towards Raven, and it picks up speed, increasing, going faster and faster until it makes impact with her. And that impact explodes on contact. But it goes off and definitely deals some damage as she shrieks and tries to back away from the explosion. Lakra has entered the chat. (laughs) They sure have. Flame war initiated. All right, now it's Nehemiah's turn. I would like to make a recovery roll, please. <laughs> you can do that. I, I, I surely can. And in fact, because of my connected to the data sphere, I can make uh-huh. two and choose the better. Sure can. So one is either it is either 10 or nine. We're going to go with the 10. Yes. But with that being the maximum. Yeah, um, nice. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and put, honestly, I'm putting all of that back into might and bring that back Fair. up to a 10. And does that make me hail once again, or am I still in Yes, it does. Excellent. Yeah. As soon as you have points in all of your pools, you move back up the damage track to hail. So Nehemiah being wrapped up in Zerk's metal tentacle just takes a moment and steals himself and is able to kind of literally recollect himself. And it's like, okay, all right. Small run. You are in a very precarious and strange situation. (laughs) How does Smallrin react to this happening? I will say she's a little shaken. (laughs) (laughs) I hope that's the minimum. I don't know that I have anything that I can really use without using my hands. That's very fair. You never think about... (laughs) The implications of creating a character that can't do things without their hands. I think in the moment, she's literally just going to kind of wriggle around, testing how tightly her limbs are held by her clothes. Like if she starts to roll away, she wants to see whether she will be leaving things behind or if they're coming with her. Your legs will come with you. Your arms will not. How far down her sleeves and her pant legs have her limbs traveled? Like are any of them close enough that she could kind of wriggle and make contact? They have to be held in place. Okay. I would absolutely say if you wanted to roll, I would make it a speed roll level. This would be hard. Mm -hmm. Level seven in order to try and do that yourself. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess I'm going to try for a difficulty seven speed roll. Yes. So this is one of the first times that we've encountered a roll that you have to roll a something higher than a 20. So technically impossible unless you find a way to lower that because that is a 21 to roll or better. Would you allow me to use espionage because I have developed such strong control over my own body and my own reactions to things that I can keep still enough that it doesn't shift at all, that I would be able to like roll over onto it and then remain completely still long enough for it to re-adhere? Sure. I was going to say that ma- that maybe something else would, would be a little bit better, but you know what? Sure. <laughs> yes. You have to roll a 15 or better. 15 or better. And now this is only going to work for one limb. <laughs> yes. No, this okay. is very much like she's, she's You're trying going, to get an arm back on. She's going to try very hard to get her dominant arm back on. Okay. And then because I'm impaired, point of effort is an extra point out an of extra my pool. Point. Yes, of course it had to be speed. All right. Come on. Mama needs a new pair of shoes. (laughs) Mama needs an arm. Failure with an eight. (laughs) You try so hard to like reposition your shoulder and hold everything in place. You have a feeling that if you just hold it there long enough, it might pull itself back together. You can't get the angle right. You're able to stay still. You're able to hold everything in like... In a solid enough, yeah, you're going to re-roll it? Yeah, I'm going to spend my late inspiration because I have a real bad feeling if I can't get at least one arm working. Okay. Success with a 15. <sighs> Whew. Okay. <sighs> Smaller and you try and then you're like, nope, this, this isn't right and shift your shoulder down a bit to get the angle a bit more correct. And you will have to make a recovery roll for this. 
Oh, that's right. It would take that 10 minutes. I can't do anything without at least one limb anyway. So yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and do this. And you feel it start to kind of like pull itself back together. Cool. You do get to take those points if you'd like them. You still get those points back over yeah, the course of the 10 minutes. I think minutes. I'll leave them on the table. Yes, I need the points. <laughs> <laughs> Smallrin rolls over and lies as still as possible and is not doing anything else in this fight unless someone's attacking her directly. For sure. Raven. So Lakra is close enough by Raven to have thrown that cipher, but not close enough for her to actually affect anything. So it is going to go at Smallrin. That's just mean. <laughs> no, I'm saying that to her, not to you. Oh, fair. That's just rude. <laughs> so this is usually a speed defense roll. And I'm going to say that instead of a level four that it would normally be, this is going to be a level six. Again, because you're gonna have to try and roll out of the way without limbs. <laughs> so level six speed defense. Success with a 16. <laughs> oh. Oh. Woof. That could have been very bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. Do you roll out of the way? Do you scoot out of the way? She just rolls over onto her back, so she's as flat as possible to the ground. Perfect. All right, it is Zerk's turn. And Nehemiah, you are still contained within the tendrils, so you do take another five points of might damage. Okay. And with the others, then he will try to lash out at those around him. You have noticed that he has been trying to hit Brex, and it has not once been landing. <laughs> ah! Jory, speed defense. Level four. Okay. With an asset. Yay. Fail with an eight. Okay. You will take five points of might damage. Okay, that's that's going to be a three down, looking pretty scraggly. And at the same time, Tana also gets hit Uh. with that. Unless you would like her to use her other royal danger. Would you like her to use it on herself or save it for one of you? Herself. Yeah, okay. yeah, she can use that on herself. Yeah, this time Tana actually ducks behind Nehemiah. And again, she's calculating where those tendrils are going to hit. It doesn't hit Nehemiah. It bounces off the tendril that is wrapping around Nehemiah. She is clearly a very witty individual. Mm-hmm. And that uses both of her uses of foil danger then. Falco, having... Lakra in the situation, I think Falco is going to launch one of those light beams at Lakra instead, given that that is a new threat in the situation. So you all once again see the lights flicker and they get just, again, a little bit dimmer as she launches this orb of light at them and does do some damage. Not much, but some. Mm-hmm. You see Lakra's gears and and mechanical parts start to like spark and shift and something is going a little bit haywire. Mm. Small and since you're like right there and able to see exactly what's going on, you remember that the three of you did a really quite large amount of damage to Lakra before this situation. And they're probably on their last leg here. Gotcha. Oh no. Brex, defense or attack? We'll keep that defense. Seems like a good idea right now. Uh huh. Tana is kind of like starting to back away a little bit, trying to stay a little bit farther away from what's going on here. She can't get super far away without like provoking someone to like keep her from running. So she's very slowly taking steps back. Jory, it's your turn. I, I will attack. I will attack Zerk. Level four yep. might attack. Fail with a four. I forgot to have the Thuman go, oh, so the Thuman gets in your way this time mm-hmm. as okay. as its turn. It keeps you from being able to hit its master and bites at your ankles and charges your knees and keeps you from being able to hit him efficiently. Generally maintains menace status. Yes, yes. General menace. All right. It is Lakra's turn, who takes yet another one of those explosive detonators. You, smaller again, if you're looking, this is the last one that they have and throws it at Raven's feet. And it again explodes. And as the little bit of smoke there clears, you see and hear Raven fall to the ground. Okay. That's on me now. It's on you now. All right. How bad is Zerk looking? Really, really, really bad. Okay. I'm going to try and make an attempt while I'm to attack sure. while I'm wrapped up in here. So sure. no asset difficulty for yep. I will spend for a point of nope, that's the wrong way. Spend for a point of effort. Should really just try and lock this in. 
And we roll failure with a five. Woof. So it goes. With that in mind, I would like to use a player intrusion. Yes, absolutely. Weapon, please, please, please. Weapon break. This guy's tentacle arms break. Yes. Gosh darn it. <laughs> what does your original attack look like? The original attack is an attempt to pop the spear out and overhand it into this guy's head. Instead, I think what happens is Nehemiah misses, but hits like a vital component in his Doc Ock armor. And <laughs> yes. causes it all to just kind of flump down. Yes, you aren't able to hit Zerk's head, but it slices right through like a joint in this metal tendril Mm -hmm. and the tendril falls off around you. And although the armor, like part of it stays on him, all of the other tendrils like fall down almost like incapacitated. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah, go ahead and spend the XP to make that happen. Already done. Very good. We actually have to use mechanics. Oh, (laughs) Oh God. (laughs) The built-in mechanics to the system. Chaos. Speaking of built-in mechanics of the system, my assumption is my intense interaction is still going. Ten minutes have not elapsed. Beautiful. Then I am going to make eye contact with Falco And as the tendrils fall from around Nehemiah and Raven is exploded and falls to the ground, Smallrin is going to make eye contact with Falco. You just attacked Lakra. You've seen what they've done to your friend. My friend is also now free. Do you really want to find out how this ends if you keep attacking us? Lakra is coming for you next. Very good. That gives you an asset, right? Gives me an asset on intimidation. Go ahead and roll level four intimidation with that asset. I'm hail now, so I'm going to spend for a point of effort. Success with a nine. Falco looks to Lakra, looks to Nehemiah, who is free, and looks to you laying on the ground. She grits her teeth, stands to her feet, makes a lunge for Amiri's body, grabs their sword, looks around, at first as though she might use it to attack someone, but then steals herself, and as quickly as she can, with an injured foot limping along, she makes a run for the other door. And Smolin, you think, well, she has to stop, it's poisoned. She doesn't. She pushes right through it. And you hear her scream and cry out, but she keeps going. Hmm. Brex, I assume keep defense. Well, do we want to keep defense or do we want the asset to attack now that there's only one to take care of? That's fair. No, I think you're right. Switching over to to attack probably makes more sense. Okay. Tana takes another few short steps back. Mm Mm-hmm. Again, trying to be very careful not to call attention to herself and the fact that she's retreating a bit down the hallway. Gotcha. Still within distance to reach her if need be, but Mm -hmm. she's very much trying to stay unnoticed. Mm -hmm. Jory, it's your turn. I'm going to look for any spaces that might have, um, when the tendrils dropped away, appeared environmentally wise. I just look for it. Um, Yeah, absolutely. And and aim for that to give myself a little bit of a goal, a little bit of a a pep talk, if you will. (laughs) Sure. Yep. Fail. GM intrusion fail. Oh. Uh, You go to try to lash out at the area where the tendrils have fallen off and you're about to make contact when some sort of remnant spark of life in this tendril whips around and just sweeps the leg underneath you and you take five points of my damage as it hits your leg and you fall to the ground okay i am i am down to one assuming my armor counted toward that yes your armor will count towards this Ow, Tana, run. I didn't notice that (laughs) she'd already (laughs) started to. With the threat that hurt the facility neutralized, Lakra relaxes. Mm. Nehemiah. I would actually shout to Lakra to, hey, hey, Lakra, how about small rent? See what's going on there. (laughs) Yeah, and Lakra heads over to help small rent. I will say that that can be their turn. They do a quick look over what's going on and see what small is trying to do with her one arm and starts holding it in place there so that it will actually fully adhere in the scenario. Nehemiah, go ahead. Um, I'm gonna attack, right? Spending the point for effort and we've got an asset and that is a success with an 11. Zerk has one point of health left. (laughs) How would you like to end this combat? 
Um, do we still have the Thuman to worry about? You do. Okay. But. But the, this is the end of the combat. The Thuman has two hit points left and is a level two creature. I will say that that is something you can dispatch of very, very easily. Fair I will enough. even say Brex will take care of it on their next turn. Sounds good. The tentacles fall and Nehemiah just lunges forward with his uh, sword spear and dispatches this guy, knocks him aside. While Brex is taking care of the Thuman, he would turn to the others. <sighs> Should I get Falco? I think we should be wary of her, but we are in no position to pursue her right now. Hmm. Smallrin says calmly from the ground and her pile of limbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened here? I'm not sure, but in taking a little time to think about it, I did feel a pulse from my belt, from my the pouch I carry on my belt when that energy blast hit me. I think it may have activated the Midnight Stone that I found mm. climbing down into the chasm. It looks like you're fixing it, though? I can feel it re-adhering, I suppose. It's an odd sensation. Uh, okay. And you can actually slowly feel the sensation in your finger starting to return, like your arm like fully fell asleep mm -hmm. almost, and then it slowly starts to tingle again, and then you can move the fingers a little bit, and bit by little bit, you can start moving and feeling it over the course of the next 10 minutes. Okay. I don't know how long it will take to do all four, but it does seem to be reversible. All right. And it doesn't hurt. Somehow even weirder, but I'll just take it for what it is. Uh, Jory, how you doing? I'm currently lying on the nest of tendrils, I think. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm good. Um, uh, Tana, Tana, you, hello? I'm here, okay. I'm here, okay. I'm here. I'm, all and, right. and she walks back down the hallway towards you. I think we all just need to take a moment and relax here for a moment. Uh, like, like seriously, everyone just, just, we aren't going anywhere uh. for a little bit. I think we're safe. Yep. And I think some of you need to be seen to, and others of you need to really take a moment to rest. And maybe we can figure out what's going on and get what you need out of this room. Okay. Yeah. Good plan. Okay. And you all take a moment to reconvene, recollect, heal, put your limbs back on, <laughs> and figure out what your next steps are going to be after a very harrowing encounter. Mm -hmm. And that's the session. <laughs> Alp. 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 Oh, wow. Right. That was a doozy. Thank you so much for listening to episode 93 of Imprinted Echoes and Amnesis. As always, if you'd like to follow the podcast on social media, you'll find us on Twitter and Facebook at Imprinted Echoes and our website, imprintedechoes.com. On our website, you can find links to the Ghostlight Media merch store and our Patreon if you're able to help us out monetarily. And on that note, I'd like to thank Jeremy, Kyle, and Tyler L. for their continued support. If you'd like to help us out in other ways, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast, leave us a rating and review, and tell a friend about the show. All of those things continue to go a long way in getting our name out there. As always, you can also find our hosts on Twitter, myself at Covered and Sawdust, Chase at TQ Loudly, Rin at Rin underscore Moran, and Bridget at Really Bridget. And be sure to follow our network, Ghostlight Media at GLM Pods. Thank you once again for listening, and I hope you'll be back in two weeks to hear yet another episode of Imprinted Echoes. And until then, may your ciphers never malfunction. Imprinted Echoes is produced by Zane Campbell-Johannes and Chase Greenley, and is edited by Alex Berkowitz. Original show theme music is by Justin Longacre. This has been a Ghost Light Media production.